This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we will be looking at three examples, and these examples will contain rational expressions. We will calculate horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Let's get started. So let's look at our first example. Let's take the case that we have 1 over x minus 5. So we want to figure out where our asymptotes are. And the way you find the asymptotes of these rational expressions, pretty simple. First thing we're going to do is take the denominator and set it equal to 0. If we solve and we find this value that makes a 0 in the denominator, this is a concern because the denominator can never be equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, we have an undefined situation. All right, so at x equals five, we have an undefined situation. And it turns out once we find this value, we've also located our vertical asymptote. All right, now the next step is to figure out what the horizontal asymptote is. All right, so let's get the horizontal. To do that, you have to compare degrees. So the degree of the denominator is the highest power on the x. So here the power, which is invisible, it's a 1. So we have degree 1. Okay, here in the numerator there are no x's. If there are no x's, it's degree 0. You'll notice that the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator. And in this case, if the degree of the denominator is larger than the numerator, the horizontal asymptote will always be y equals 0. All right, let's get a diagram of this, and we'll see how this all pieces together to help us with domain and range. All right, so we have ourselves the graph, and let's find these asymptotes in the graph. So if we start with the x equals 5, you can see at x equals 5, we have this vertical asymptote. And if you look at y equals 0, in other words, if we look at, my dashes aren't coming out so well, but if you look at the x-axis, this is our asymptote. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that one because that's actually a distraction. Okay, so if you notice that, um, everything comes together. The algebra and the diagram match. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, when we calculate the domain, oop, let's do that in white. Okay, so you calculate the domain, we're looking again for the x values. So this curve really has two branches. It's discontinuous, right? There's, it, it's got two branches. So let's find the domain of just this first branch, the leftmost branch. Well, that branch goes from negative infinity, and it approaches this value 5, but it's never equal to it. It gets closer and closer to 5, but it never gets there. Okay, now let's talk about this one. It looks like it was getting closer and closer to 5, right? So now it's moving away from this 5 value. It was never equal to it, but it was very close to it. And as we move to the right, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so there you go. So those are the domains of the two branches. We stick them together with a union sign, because there you go. Now we have the domain written in interval notation. Let's get to the range. Okay, so the range of this function are the y values. Again, I'm going to take this in two pieces. Let's take the bottommost branch. So the branch here goes from negative infinity, and it goes up and up and up, and it looks like it's getting closer to 0. Okay, it's getting closer to the x-axis, where y is equal to 0, but it never touches it. All right. We're going to unite that with another one. Now this other branch, it, it was coming, it was very, very close to zero here, but it's moving away from, uh, from zero and it's headed towards positive infinity. So it's going from zero to positive infinity. And there you go. We've got domain and we have the range. All right, let's move on to a, another example. All right, here's example two. Let's take a look at g of x. So g of x is a large fraction here. Um, actually, I have a negative 3 in that numerator. Okay, so what do I have down here? I've got x squared plus x minus 12. All right, first step, we take our denominator, 
set it equal to zero to find the value that creates an undefined situation. And in this case, we do have to factor this. So what do we get? We get x plus four, x minus three. We're gonna set these factors equal to zero. I'm not showing the work because it's extremely simple mathematics. And here you go. I now, for this problem, have two vertical asymptotes. All right, now to get the horizontal asymptotes, again, you compare degrees. What's the degree of the denominator? This is degree two. What about the numerator? It's degree zero. There are no x's there. All right, so in the case that the denominator has a greater degree than the numerator, we get y equals zero, just like our last example. That's our horizontal asymptote. All right, let's get a picture of this. So again, if you examine the diagram and you look for the asymptotes, it will match. So you get the x equals negative four, that's right here. So we get this vertical line. At x equals three, we get another one. And of course, we have the x-axis, which if I draw it, yeah, you're gonna see it's not gonna look so good here, but you get the picture, right? So there's another one right there. Okay, well, let's use this now to calculate the domain and the range. It's not much of a calculation, it's more of a determination here. We're gonna determine it. So uh, let's write it here. I'm a little bit cramped for space. Okay, I know I'm gonna need a lot of space because there's three branches in this discontinuous curve. I got this left branch, this middle branch, and I've got this right branch. So taking it from left to right, like I should with domain, it goes from negative infinity and it approaches negative four. So negative, I'm gonna write it over here, negative infinity approaches four. Oh, negative four. It's never equal to that. All right, what about our middle branch? It looks like it goes from negative four all the way to three. It's never equal to those values, but it's approaching them. In our rightmost branch, we went from three, it's very close to three, and it goes to positive infinity. Oh, I could write that neater. So from three to positive infinity. All right, that takes care of our domain. All right, now let's get to the range. All right, now range, we're looking at the y value. So we're not looking left to right anymore, we're looking bottom to top. All right, now this is gonna be easier. Now even though there are three branches, it looks like these, the left and the right branch, have the same range. They go from negative infinity and they approach zero, right? Negative infinity and they approach zero. So those two can be expressed with the same interval. All right, now what about the middle branch? It looks like it was very close to zero and uh, and then it's going all the way up to infinity. Now you would think it looks like it, it goes from zero to positive infinity. It certainly does go to positive infinity, but it doesn't really get close to zero. It, it's, you know, it's not like this asymptote that's getting closer and closer to zero. So I use the trace feature on the graphing calculator and it looks like 0.245. Of course, that's rounded to the nearest thousandth. Uh, it looks like the lowest value it gets in this vicinity. So it looks like 0.245. And then it goes to infinity. Okay, so I had to use the trace feature to get this value. Okay, let's go on to the next curve. All right, here's our final example. And we're going to have 4x plus 3 all over x minus 2. Okay, so here we've got this function, and we're going to graph it. So again, or actually calculate the domain and range, so we need the asymptote. So we set this equal to 0. We get x is 2. And of course, this is our vertical. So this one only has one vertical asymptote. All right, let's find the horizontal. Now to get the horizontal, again, we compare degrees. Okay, let's compare degrees. So the bottom one has degree one, and the top has degree one. Oh, well we know when the bottom is greater, it's zero. All right, well it's not, okay? 
uh, when the, I'm sorry, if the bottom has a greater degree, then it's uh, y equals zero. Now, in the case that they're equal, you take the leading coefficients, and here you got four and one. Those are the coefficients of the leading term, and you divide them. So in other words, I take four divided by one, and I get four. That's only when the degrees are equal. All right, let's see a diagram of this. All right, if you look closely, you will see this, that it is working. So let's start with the x is two, one, two. So it's hard to see because I'm a little zoomed in here. But if you were to zoom out with a graphing calculator, hard to draw a dashed line here, but you could see that it is asymptotic to x equals two. And then if you do y equals four, one, two, three, four, you have another one. And again, it's hard to tell here exactly because this is a little zoomed in, but I wanted to make sure I could see these numbers here clearly. But if you zoom out, it is clear that those are the two asymptotes, which matches our graph. Okay, using this diagram, we are now going to calculate, or maybe I should say we are going to write the domain and range. All right, let's start with the domain. Okay, so what's the domain? Let's take this left branch of our discontinuous curve. So the left branch goes from negative infinity, and it looks like it gets closer and closer to the x equals 2. Okay. And what's the other one? The other one goes from 2, and it's going to the right all the way to positive infinity. There you go. There's your domain. Now let's talk about the range. Okay, for our range, we now are looking at the two branches. Let's take the lowest branch first. It comes from negative infinity, and it's coming up and up and up and up, and it looks like it's getting closer to this value 4. Okay, we're just looking at the y-axis now. So it's getting closer to 4. So it goes from negative infinity to 4. Okay, let's look at the next one. The next one looks like it, it's coming from the 4 value, Right, this 4y value, and it's going up to positive infinity. And there you have it, domain and range. Okay, so go back to mathguide.com. Check out our lessons, instructional videos, and uh, interactive quizzes. Take care.